The breakthroughs of Monet, Pissario, Renoir, and others would not have been possible if it had not been for an ingenious but little-known American portrait painter, John G. Rand. Rand's brush with greatness came in the form of a revolutionary invention, the paint tube. Made from tin and sealed with a screw cap, Rand's collapsible tube gave a paint a long shelf life, didn't leak, and could be repeatedly opened and closed. Rand's tubes carried inside them another crucial element as well, new colors. Paint pigments had remained nearly unchanged since the Renaissance. Since oil paints were time-consuming to produce and quick to dry out, artists prepared only a few colors to work with during a painting session and would fill in just one area of a canvas at a time, such as a blue sky or red dress. But Rand's tin tubes enabled the Impressionists to take full advantage of dazzling new pigments, such as chrome yellow and emerald green, that had been invented by industrial chemists in the 19th century. With the full rainbow of colors from tubes on their palettes, the Impressionists could record a fleeting moment in its entirety. Pierre-Auguste Renoir said, Without colors in tubes, there would be no Cezanne, no Monet, no Passario, and no Impressionism. So yeah, today we're talking about, uh, technology. Hi, I'm Amanda Call, and today's video is going to be a little bit different. I'm not really going to talk about a specific technique or anything that I do. I am going to talk about the type of art that I do and the type of art that other people do a lot more generally. This was inspired by some uh, Twitter drama that took place a little over a week ago at this point, probably now. I'm not really interested in doing drama for drama's sake, so I'm not going to name names or get into really the particulars of how the whole thing went down on Twitter. Basically, the tweet in question that kicked off all of the drama was a professional artist commenting on the fact that they asked their students why so many of their students used iPads to create art. Like, why, why, was, why were iPads the thing? Why was that their tool of choice? And the answer they got from their stu from the, their students was, it's easier. And this answer upset <laughs> this person. And so they responded with a little bit of a rant about like, well, you want things to be easier. Wait until you're a professional artist and see how easy things are then, I'm telling you. <sighs> So this kicked off a whole back and forth with a whole bunch of people on Twitter of, in the art community, of, yeah, you're totally right, my guy, art is hard, and these kids have no idea. You're a dinosaur who doesn't understand technology, and you're wrong about the kids these days. Basically, as one expects with most social media debates, you ended up with two people screaming at each other with a chasm between them, and not a lot of bridge there for uh, actually communicating and sharing ideas. And I get it. There has been this sort of traditional versus digital divide pretty much since digital became a big thing in art. There's always kind of been this like traditional artist versus digital artist team mentality, whatever that's about. So what I figured I wanted to do is, uh, I'm not really interested in promoting the drama, but I do have thoughts about this. And I feel like those thoughts are uh, somewhat important, so I shall now subject you to them. <laughs> so this is me reaching across this chasm to be a primarily traditional artist who wants to come and defend digital art now. Okay, so first things first, this divide is um, completely nonsensical. Because there really isn't much in the way of a pure traditional art anymore. Yes, even if you work exclusively with traditional media, like oil paint on canvas or colored pencils or anything like that, your work is still going to be photographed by a digital camera, most likely, and then it is going to be distributed digitally. I guess an argument could be made for, like, sculpture, but most art forms are, in some po at some point, going to be captured and transformed into a digital medium so that they can be sent out throughout the world. If your painting or your drawing or anything like that is destined to be printed and reproduced, it is almost certainly then going to actually end up scanned, put into some sort of digital imaging software in order to be put into something that's going to print it en masse, or if it's going onto a website, or it's going into a magazine, all of those layouts, books, all of that stuff is done digitally at this point. I myself, while everything that I draw and ink and paint for the most part is done on pieces of paper with traditional tools, I still
still scan them in. I, I have a giant scanner where I scan them and then I bring them into Photoshop and I clean them up. And that's actually been incorporated into my process. So like, if you look at a recent comic page I have here, it might be a little bit hard to see on the camera, but that's a blue, blue underdrawing. I do my underdrawing in a blue pencil because it's easy for me to see contrasted against the black ink as I'm starting to work on inking. And then I can bring it into Photoshop and I can grab the blue out and eliminate it. So I kind of get a little bit of the best of both worlds where I can use digital tools to enhance the traditional media that I'm making. And I still have my nice physical artifact of my work as well. And while I am primarily a traditional artist, I do also work digitally on occasion. Usually if someone that I'm doing freelance work for specifically requests that they want it digitally colored because that's what fits with their project, then I do digitally color. It's not exactly my strong suit, but it's something that I do on occasion. So I'm still identified primarily as a traditional artist, but I do digital art as well. Also, if I'm doing like a painted or mixed media piece where I don't necessarily have like the blue underdrawing that I'm going to pull out or anything like that. This piece is almost exactly as you would see it after it has been scanned in and converted into a digital image. The digital stuff helps with, uh, you know, stuff like this, this weird little black dot that transferred from my scan bed onto my finished piece, which is very annoying. But thankfully I was able to remove it in Photoshop <laughs> and present a nice finished piece without a random black dot in the middle of it to the comic anthology this was a part of. So yeah, the basic idea that digital and traditional art are two different things that never come near each other, obviously that's just foolish. That's kind of a false divide. You have artists who primarily work in one mode or the other, but there's always a certain amount of crossover. And even artists that work a lot digitally will also sketch things out traditionally, or they'll do their underdrawing traditionally. You know, there's very few people who are 100% one way or the other. So I kind of like to start breaking down this idea of the claim that digital art is easier. And I will start by first saying that's true. That's true in certain situations. In certain aspects, digital art is easier than traditional art. So how? How is creating digital art easier than creating traditional art? Well, for example, expense. So yeah, an iPad is um, not cheap. Let me look this up. Let me look this up right now. Uh, I'm going to look up Apple's website. What, how much is an iPad? Yeah, so like a really nice iPad is going to be around $1,000, plus you have to buy the pen and you have software and stuff. The software is actually not very expensive compared to some other alternatives. So that's a whole other thing. So uh, yeah, an iPad is going to be anywhere from a few hundred dollars to like a thousand dollars. I don't want to tell you how much money I spend on art supplies every year. <laughs> it's not a thousand dollars, but uh, it's several hundred. I, I easily spend several hundred dollars a year on just paper and ink and new brushes. Um, and I don't even do an expensive type of art, like painting. A traditional art is expensive. That iPad is gonna last for a lot of years. And I, I, I buy a pad of paper and I chew through it in like a couple of weeks to like a couple of months and then I have to buy another one. <laughs> I, whereas your iPad, you can just keep using over and over and over again for years, for years and years. Oh, and this doesn't even take into, the, into account that, uh, how do you think I'm doing all of this? I have a monster desktop computer that I have to upgrade every few years to make sure that it is keeping up with the art programs that I have to run on it. Because as I mentioned before, you cannot get away with doing strictly traditional art. You still need scanners, image editing software, in order to transfer those images into the digital world where we are all moving this information around. So another consideration when you're talking digital versus traditional is space. This right here, this is an iPad. It's not mine. It was actually uh, issued to my kindergartner <laughs> by his school for remote learning. Um, so I'm going to very carefully go set this down. But yeah, that little thing, that little thing, that's it. You have that and, and you have your pen and you're like good to go for a digital art creation. Meanwhile, I have um, my little 
pocket studio set up right now, but I do have my enormous drafting table. I have my computer desk and my scanner that's so enormous that it sits on the floor because it does not fit on a shelf. And oh, what are some other things that I need as a traditional artist that a digital artist does not have to worry about? I I have a I have a light box, like an actual honest to goodness light box. Uh, some people have much bigger like light tables. That's very fancy. I have my um, this thing still works, so I have not replaced it, even though it's kind of it's kind of small. But I'm usually just like tracing one panel, so it's fine. Um, but small being a relative term, this thing is still um, kind of bulky. What? Oh, I've got I've got boxes upon boxes of colored pencils and um, ink pencils. Very large pads of paper that you have to store flat so that they do not get all warped or store very snugly vertically so that they do not get all warped and useless. Pens, brushes, more pens and, and brushes and, and sharpeners and erasers and oh gouache, gouache. Remember the expense we were talking about? This stupid little tube of gouache costs like six dollars. Inks, paints, brush cleaner. I also own a uh, decommissioned military flat file that is made of steel and weighs approximately 200 pounds and every time that I have had to move with it I have cursed my existence plus the existence of the comic artist that I bought it from who sold it to me for a song because he was tired of moving it around. Um, and that's only one of like three flat files that I own. It's the biggest one um, but I own three flat files for storing my artwork in and someday they will all be full and I will have to get another flat file. That's a lot. That's a lot to have to deal with. If you're in a limited space or you just don't have the space in your life to make room for all of that stuff, uh, yeah, digital is the way to go then. Not to mention this is also super portable. If you've got something little like this that you can just throw into your bag, I can't go much of anywhere with my um, giant comic pages. Like yeah, I can travel with a sketchbook and at least get work done on like some concept work, but it's a lot harder to do any actual real finished artwork and be anywhere other than chained to my drafting table with the type of materials that I have. And the drawback there is that means there is less time that I can work. I know some of my friends who are professional artists who are also stuck doing the remote school thing with their kids, but they have their iPad in their lap and they're working away while they're sitting at the kitchen table making sure their kids are doing their homework. And that works for them and that's great because that's more time that they can be doing artwork and if you're a student especially where you're still learning and you're still growing as an artist and trying to figure this stuff out those hours that you're putting in are crucial to your growth and development i remember like a million years ago when i was first learning in a musical instrument in like elementary school and my music teacher at the time said that the hardest part of practicing is just opening the case. And that's really true. That's really true of anything that you need to practice. And artwork is included in that. Sometimes the hardest thing you can do is to just get your stuff out and start. And when the bar for that is so much lower because all you have to do is flip open your iPad and turn it on, then you're going to get a lot more work done than if it requires moving to a whole different section of your house and clearing off a large surface and getting out all your accoutrement. Another concern with traditional art is that all of these art artifacts that I have, these finished pieces that I have, I have to make sure that I'm correctly storing them. That's why I have all those giant flat files in order to keep my work flat so that it doesn't warp out of the light and out of moisture so that it doesn't get ruined. Yeah, it's actually pretty easy for terrible fates to befall traditional artwork. I know people who have lost tons of their original comic pages because they were traveling to a convention and their luggage was lost. Um, I've heard of artists losing tons of their paintings in a fire when like the building that they were stored in burns down. Flood, that's like my absolute worst nightmare, like a water pipe breaking somewhere and just rendering all of my pages into pulp. <laughs> Whereas if you're creating everything digitally and then taking advantage of cloud backup, very little is really going to happen to your work. I mean, there's always the chance that a file can get corrupted, but it's actually not much worse of a chance than me spilling tea on my comic page. I was like, man, at this point, I feel like I'm convincing myself to buy an iPad and start using Procreate. 
All right, so I would like to now circle back to that statement that creating digital art is easier and say, that is also false. Just because creating digital art is a different skill set than creating traditional art as far as the materials that you're using does not mean that it is actually an easier skill set, and it doesn't mean that creating art itself is any easier. Actually getting the result that you want out of a pen on a digital tablet with the digital brushes and everything available to you, that can be pretty intuitive with the way these programs have been designed to be better and better and more responsive to people, but it's not gonna make art for you. You're still the one holding the pen. You're still the one who has to figure out how to take these vague ideas in your brain and transfer them into something that other people will understand and respond to. Things that an iPad doesn't help you with when it comes to creating art. It does not help you with learning drawing fundamentals. It does not help you with learning anatomy. It does not help you with making effective compositions. It does not help you learn color theory. I mean, it helps you play around with color theory a lot easier than if you have to mix a bunch of freaking gouache like I did in college when I was learning color theory. It certainly doesn't help you with making your ideas clear and communicate. It does not help you in establishing tone and mood. These are the things that actually make art hard, because what art actually is, is communicating your ideas to another person. It is transferring an idea into a visual medium and putting it in front of somebody and having them understand the idea that you are communicating. And there is so much more to that than the tools you are using to do it. That's the part that makes art hard. Yeah, drawing a stylus across an iPad screen may be easier than rendering something in watercolor, but it doesn't make the ideas any easier to come out. Like, so the idea that digital art is easier, it may be easier to produce, but it's not any easier to make effective. And that right there, that's really the crux of the whole thing. That's why I find the whole argument kind of silly how easy or difficult it is, how many hours it takes you pouring over your screen versus pouring over your drafting table is really irrelevant because the thing that makes art hard has nothing to do with the materials that you're using. So man, now that I've like convinced myself that I may as well just buy an iPad, so why do I still work traditionally? Just a quick aside here. Um, well, honestly, actually, digital screens really bother my eyes. I'm, I'm actually one of these people that has to, you know, wear the uh, very stylish <laughs> blue light lenses uh, in order to do anything on the computer for more than five minutes. Um, I also kind of suck at computers. Um, the fact that anything that I've produced exists on the internet is some kind of miracle. I, I can't, like, operate a digital lock to get into a house without screwing something up, so <laughs> I'm cursed. <laughs> Personally, I also really enjoy having the physical artifact. I enjoy being able to hold up something that I did and look at it and have it archived and be able to sell it to someone or give it to someone, display it on a wall. Like, that's really meaningful to me. It means a lot to me and, and I enjoy it. I also really enjoy the actual tactile sensation of drawing a pencil across a nice toothy piece of paper, having my brush glide over something nice and smooth and feeling that ink slowly pulling out of it. These are things that I really enjoy and they're part of what makes art really fun for me. Not everyone has to feel the same way, that's not necessarily everybody's favorite part of the process, but it's a part that I really enjoy and it's not a part that I'm really willing to give up. So, in conclusion, art is hard because communicating is hard. <laughs> and art is just communication. So, no amount of tools are going to make communicating any easier. Gosh, if the internet hasn't driven that home, I don't know what will. And there's always new technology developing, and there's no reason to be pushing back against it as something that's not good enough for the way that you should be making art. As with the example in the beginning, um, you know, there was of course pushback against new colors coming out, pre-made in these little metal tubes. What is this? Why would you do it this way? We've been painting with our hand ground and mixed colors that we store in pig bladders for the last 500 years. Why would you change that? And changing it led to all of modern art. So 
really the best thing to do is just embrace the fact that there are plenty of different ways out there to make art. Do whatever works best for you and just keep doing the best you can, everybody. So that was me going on a rant, a traditional artist uh, supporting the awesomeness that is digital art, even if it's not really for me. Uh, I still enjoy it. I think that obviously it has a, had a huge impact on the way that art is made these days and the trends that we see in the art world. And some of it may not be for the best, but some of it really is. And that's great. And also um, history is the one who's going to judge, not those of us living through this transition right now. Yeah, so if you enjoyed this video or if you enjoy my other videos, please do the things on the YouTube, like and subscribe and all of that jazz, share me with your friends. Uh, I usually do stuff that's a little bit more instructional than this, but I felt a little bit of um, philosophizing was also called for in this particular instance. So I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time. Oh yeah, if you've noticed that I look a little more uh, peaked than normal, uh, I just donated blood yesterday and I'm still feeling a little bit like... But hey, if you can, if, uh, if you're not barred from doing so for any medical or personal history reasons, you should definitely donate blood. Uh, blood banks all around the country are super low right now because they haven't been able to do as many drives as normal. It's a lot harder with um, a lot of places being closed and distancing guides and everything. I've had a hard time maintaining the blood supply, but people still need it. There's a lot of weird problematic issues about how blood can be donated and how that whole process works, but... Regardless, people still need blood donations. We don't have artificial blood yet. If you can, uh, definitely go and do it. I recommend. All right, thank you. Bye. I'm one of these people that actually has to, like, oh my god, I just spoke myself.